What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 WWE stars who got busted open hard way. Now in wrestling, usually if you see some blood, there's obviously a blade job. They'll have a small blade of cut a little incision, usually in the forehead area to simulate them legitimately or per storyline getting busted open with whatever weapon that was used at the time. But there are some situations where that's not even needed. They actually legitimately get busted open and <laughs> they don't need a, a blade to, you know, for you to see the blood coming out in real time or whatnot. So we're going to check out some of those moments where a blade was not needed and they were actually busted open legitimately, which can actually kind of be uh, even more dangerous because at that point they don't really have the control of how much blood they're losing depending on how big the um the uh the gash is so we're gonna check this out appreciate all love and support let's get right into this one slinger inherent and any number of injuries can happen at any time from broken bones and torn tendons to concussions and beyond and while the blade has been used to create the illusion that a move strike or weapon shot has busted a mm -hmm. wwe star like open there have also been many other times where that effect has been achieved for real aka the hard way normally accidental performers have some sometimes done this on purpose to enhance a storyline match or angle mm -hmm. those absolute mad bastards yeah i'm adam Pachisi from crazy. cult wrestling and these are 10 wwe stars who got busted open hard way join us Number 10, Kurt Angle. It didn't take Kurt Angle too long to wave goodbye to his pure amateur ideals and embrace the down and dirty ethos of WWE's brand of sports entertainment. That extended to getting color, which the Olympic gold medalist was happy to do when the occasion called for it. Like, for example, during his epic WWE title match with Stone Cold Steve Austin at SummerSlam 2001. There was no need for him to bleed during or after his mid-card match with Mark Henry on the August 15th, 2002 episode of SmackDown, the new kid on the block Rey Mysterio and his tricky knee braces saw to it that Angle shed some clarets. Uh. Following his victory over the world's strongest man, Angle was attacked by the masked man and sent to the outside with a top rope Hurricane Rana, a spot which incidentally needed to be filmed three times as they kept bungling it up. The oh, third damn. time wasn't the charm for old Kurtz, whose head came into contact with Rey's brace, breaking damn. the skin. Damn. 14 stitches were required Ooh. to close the wound. Rumor has it that Angle also needed an extra pint of milk to numb the pain. And and once again, that's the trade-off with getting busted open the hard way. With using a blade, usually it doesn't really take too much. If you don't go too crazy with cutting yourself, you may end up with a situation where if you do it uh, too many times, you may end up with scar tissue on the forehead area. You see a lot of wrestlers have that. But if you're busted open the hard way, usually you got to get it stapled up, not even stitched up. Sometimes you got to get it stapled closed, like depending on how big the gash is. So that's the trade off with that. Number nine, Finn Balor. Oh, Hell yep. in a Cell is perhaps WWE's most feared <laughs> stipulation match. In these more sanitized times, however, the cage may have gotten bigger and turned red for a bit for some reason, but mm -hmm. the threat of danger has noticeably decreased. Thankfully, we got a decent amount of gore for Edge and Finn yep. Balor's cell <laughs> encounter at WrestleMania 39. I say we're thankful for the unintentional bloodshed giving the cell itself an element of danger that it had been missing for a while, mm -hmm. but we are obviously Obviously not glad that the Judgment Day leader got Jeez. his head caved in with a steel ladder. It was hard to properly see the outcome since the match official momentarily halted proceedings and Balor was in full demon mode makeup, but the evidence was on the canvas for yeah. all to see as the match chugged along. Just the 14 staples for Finn and his demonic laceration afterwards. Oh Number eight, Lee. And once again, you know, I'm glad that he's okay. Even though we know blood should usually be involved in Hell in a Cell matches, especially if you're having those matches, it's usually the feud ending match. It's gotten personal, whatever the case may be. But I'm glad he's okay. You know, it's just the way that we were able to get blood was definitely not planned. Whew, that that picture of all those staples in his head, crazy. Kudos to him for being able to you know, still be able to compete in the match and, and finish out the match the way he did. Because boy, oh boy, 
That was a brutal ladder to the head, man. It is exceptionally rare to see WWE's female performers get busted open, but yep. it does happen every now and again. We've seen plenty of black eyes and bloody lips over the years, especially in more recent times as the performance level and physicality of the women's division has increased dramatically, but very seldom does the red stuff flow freely. Yeah. I suppose if there was a time you would want it to happen, a championship match on a major pay-per-view would be the place. Future WWE Hall of Famers Ivory and Lita were duking it out for the right to censor members' women's title when a live round caught the Team Extreme's plucky daredevil. The potato shot opened Lita up and Jeez. added some decent drama to what had been, in truth, a rather scrappy contest to that point. It started out as a trickle, but before long, the left Jeez. side of Lita's face was the same color as her hair, with the plasma staining Ivory's white shirt, too. Somewhat surprisingly, considering the amount of blood that spouted from it, only a couple of stitches were required to close the cut. That's not bad. Number seven, <laughs> Randy Orton. In a post-PG world, the practice of blading, intentionally cutting yourself with a razor blade to induce blood flow, was strictly outlawed by uh -huh. WWE. Dave Batista found out the hard way when he was fined a hundred grand for gigging <laughs> during a cage match main event with Chris Jericho on an episode of Raw. Which sucks. If you're in a cage, there should be some blood, bro. That's that's all I'm saying. I know they went. You know, they care about investors and stuff like that. But you got to be able to, you know, let it be known. Like, hey, this is part of wrestling. So if you want to be part of this product, this is how it goes sometimes. It's not going to be all the time, but this is how it goes sometimes. In 2008, turns out Vince McMahon wasn't keen on his wrestlers mutilating themselves on his flagship show, but his stance was different when it came to drawing blood with Brock Lesnar's elbows eight years later. Mm -hmm. At SummerSlam 2016, Lesnar battered the skull of the legend killer to win the match via technical knockout. Not only did the very real blows from the former UFC real. heavyweight champion give Orton a concussion, go figure, it also caused a pool of blood to form next to him on the canvas. All in in all, it took 10 staples to put Randy together again. It was a powerful visual and had some fans questioning whether Lesnar had gone into business for himself, yeah. fueled by Shane McMahon marching out and an uninformed Jericho throwing a tizzy about the situation backstage. It was all part of a perplexing plan to, I suppose, make Brock look like a monster because he really needs the help, doesn't he? Yeah, we, we already knew that he was a monster. When I watched it live, I was just like, Whoa, wait, that that wasn't no blade job. No, he he legitimately busted him open. Wait, what? What? And he was he was leaking blood. Like he legit like that's crazy to know they like, hey, we're gonna do this. You cool with this? I right, bet. And Randy Orton legitimately got concussed and let this nigga bust him open with his elbow. That's wild bro that's insanity and vince let it happen you would think like what vince how, why why would you let that happen but I don't, I don't know. That was crazy. <laughs> Number six, Roman Reigns. Back with the Beast Incarnate now, yep. and another incident where his pointy appendage did yep. some damage during a major main event. A lot can be said about Brock's WrestleMania 34 headliner with Roman Reigns, that it was slow, boring, repetitive, lacked heat, wasn't what people wanted to see, didn't click, turned into a complete disaster. Well, you get the picture, but yeah. they at least strived for epic out there. As the match descended into train wreck territory, Lesnar mounted Reigns and cut him open with a series of hard elbow strikes. Yep. I mean, he really opened him up because yep. the big dog sprung a gusher out there. It spurred on his futile comeback before falling to an F5, but the visual of a bloody Roman sporting the proverbial crimson mask, his eyes bulging out of his head. That They were trying to get that he could overcome the odds, come back. It didn't work. Even when they saw the blood, it didn't work. It just, they didn't care about this match. Didn't work. It it had an effect when he did it to Randy. Because people loved Randy at the time. It had an effect then. 
It did not work here because no one cared about Roman's character at this point, so. Ed was one of the bout's only highlights. After the show, rumors ran rampant that the juice was of the artificial variety and that the tribal chief had, shock horror, used blood capsules to get the desired effect. This was dispelled when Reigns came out on Raw the next night with his forehead seriously swollen up and yeah. WWE confirming that 12 sutras and 10 staples were needed to plug the cut up. Number 5, Brock Lesnar. <laughs> he's and all we on this back list. with more Brock Lesnar, though <laughs> this time he's on the receiving end. Hey, yep. nobody ever said he couldn't dish it out and take it. Since his WWE return in 2012, yeah. Lesnar has made a habit of getting split open, either intentionally or otherwise. Yep. One of the gnarliest instances of Brock getting bloody came on the February 25th, 2013 episode of Raw when he engaged in a vicious yep, brawl with, with a returning yeah. Triple H. Lesnar went head first into the ring post turning himself into a human hot dog with extra ketchup due to a cut that required 18 staples to close. He got cut in the WrestleMania 31 main yeah. event, as well as during a Madison Square Garden house show outing with Austin Theory on the road to WrestleMania 38. Those were all apparently accidental, but there have been some intentional instances too, such as his 2015 Hell in a Cell war with The Undertaker and his grudge match with Cody Rhodes at Backlash 20. The dude is... He's insane. He's legitimately insane. Dude ran in. He ran head first into the exposed turnbuckle to sell this match. Fun match. <laughs> ran in head first. Just he just he loves to. If you ask this motherfucker to to bleed, fuck using a blade. I don't need to use a blade. I'll do it myself. Let me run into something and bleed for you. Legit. Insanity. 2023, where he collided with the exposed turnbuckle. People sometimes question Brock's love for the business, but not many in recent memory have so willingly risked their lovely pink skin for it. Yeah. Number four, Bobby Lashley. When the new World Heavyweight title was ushered in via a thrown-together tournament, it uh, felt like yeah, any real sense one. of proper stakes or high drama was sorely lacking. Big Bad Bobby Lashley inadvertently turned his two tournament matches into more of a spectacle when he got cut open on the yep. May 12, 2023 edition of SmackDown. On his way to a triple threat triumph over Austin Theory and Sheamus, the Almighty was launched into the steel stairs by Theory, causing the gash. He may have been opened up and dripping fluid it out of his head, but Lashley rallied and won the match. Mm -hmm. Later in the freaking night, he met AJ Styles for the chance to freaking square off with Seth freaking Rollins <laughs> in the freaking final. <laughs> During the match with the phenomenal one, Bobby's cut was opened once again. Yep. Styles, ever the wrestling strategist, targeted it by repeatedly smacking him in the noggin. A great strategy, you have to admit, and one that paid off as AJ booked his place in the final while Lashley looked like a warrior in defeat. Number three, CM Punk. The main of I mean, sometimes the added of color unintentionally can make the match seem that more intense, that more brutal, that more serious. Then all-star money in the bank ladder match from the 2013 pay-per-view of the same name was a rough night at the office for several of the combatants. Christian suffered a chipped tooth while both CM Punk and the returning Rob Van Dam ended up leaving Philadelphia with a little more metal in their heads. RVD got 14 staples for a gash in his forehead, which, while no doubt painful, Jeez. did not result in that much blood lost. Punk, on the other hand, had it yeah. running in his eyes after Paul Heyman turned yep. on him by braining him with a ladder. Talk about adding injury to insult, eh? The Straight Edge Superstar got 13 staples for Ooh. the pleasure. It wasn't the first time Friendly Phil had been busted open hardware really during Phil. a PG <laughs> era pay-per-view as his match with Rey Mysterio at Over the Limit 2010 had to be momentarily stopped just minutes in, much to the annoyance of Punk, who waved off any mid-match attempts to clean him off. Interestingly, Punk Punk was the architect of one of WWE's most obvious blade jobs ever during a cage match with Jerry Lawler, but the then WWE champion wasn't fined or suspended for it. Wow. Number two, Beth Phoenix. That's crazy. He, <laughs> he didn't get fined or suspended for that. 
or at least not suspended, but fine. Most likely they definitely would have fined him, but I'm surprised they didn't. Back to the fairer sex now, and I suppose the Royal Rumble match increases the likelihood of an in-ring accident happening. With 30 females entering the bout and so much going on, it's hardly surprising that there could be some timing issues, miscommunications, or other mistakes that could result in accidental injuries. Entering the 2020 Women's Rumble with just five days' notice, Beth Phoenix was booked to last almost half an hour before before being eliminated. Damn. Shortly after getting in the ring, however, the Glamazon cracked the back of her head off the ring post while grappling with Bianca Belair on the turnbuckles. As the match wore on, Beth's hair began to change color to the wow. point that Edge must have been sat backstage wondering when his blonde wife decided to become a redhead. Credit to Phoenix for sticking to her task and continuing to wrestle as her mane became matted with blood. Edge would reveal afterwards that the cut required six staples to shut Ooh. and praised his missus for her toughness. Yeah, nah, you gotta be a tough person to be out there for an extended period of time while your head is bleeding and still know what you're doing and have the wherewithal to continue on. Much respect. One, Paul London. The Cruiserweight title match between Paul London and Billy Kidman from the April 7th, 2005 episode of SmackDown should have been a routine bit of business. You know, the two go out there, put on an entertaining contest for the five or six minutes they were allotted before getting the hell out of Dodge. While the former tag team championship partners had engaged in a personal feud in the past, it had really been put to bed many months ago. On this night, however, things took a turn for the dramatic when Kidman went to scoop his opponent out of the ring. On his way between the bottom and middle rope, London hit his head on an exposed steel bolt, busting him wide Damn. open. This forced something of a script change, with referee Charles Robinson intervening in an attempt to stop the match. Despite leaking plasma, London did what any good babyface champion would do and fought through the pain to eke out a victory via a roll-up. London later called the unplanned blood Jeez. a gift from the wrestling gods, and the following week cut a fiery promo while wearing a bandage, but WWE neglected to fully capitalize on it, and all London had to show for his efforts was a nice scar. Yeah, and, and once again, when those type of situations happen, you, obviously you don't want the, the wrestlers to legitimately get hurt in that way, but if they're able to make something out of it and come out of it looking better, you gotta capitalize on that. The same thing they did with Stone Cold, even though they planned that. The image of him going against Bret Hart in the sharpshooter, not tapping out, blood just streaming down his face. He's in agony and he passes out. The image of that, the imagery, that's what sells people like, yo, this Stone Cold guy, he's a badass. Anybody else would have tapped, but he was bleeding and he didn't tap out. You can make a star by having them be in a situation they're bleeding profusely or whatever and then they come out on top you know somehow they're able to overcome it they come out on top and it makes them look more like a badass the same thing with becky lynch that definitely could have been on this list too because she legitimately got punched by nia Jax and was blood everywhere nose was broken and she looked like a badass in the crowd like what's up when i believe smackdown had invaded raw she looked like a badass like Yo, was was good. You know what I'm saying? And she became even more over because of that because she she was still standing. She was ready to go. She was ready to keep fighting. Broken nose, bloody face and all. That's a that's that can be a star making moment. So comment down below. Let me know some other instances in wrestling where wrestlers legitimately got busted open hard way but i appreciate all the love and support road to 150k and i'm still young speedy youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace